Rockin' 101, the rock station once again. Happy birthday, Jimmy Page. And here to celebrate his birthday on the phone, Jimmy Page. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Steve Gutenberg. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I didn't mean to throw you out. You know, it's Jimmy Page's birthday today. It is Jimmy Page's birthday, and, and God bless him. Yeah. Um, and I heard, and the funny thing is, I was talking to Jimmy today, and he said he was going to watch our picture, How to Murder Your Husband, this Saturday night. I just, I, I, I said, really? Yeah. Wow. I said, don't you have more important things to do? He said, nope. No. That's, that's where we're. Doing. No, he's going to write a song that's about it. Well, that, that, that's the Jimmy Page I know and love. That's the Steve Gutenberg I know and love. Always, never too proud to sneak in a plug right off the bat. Well, welcome to the show. We're talking. No. <laughs> that's why we're here. How to, yeah, how to murder your husband for me? Hearing this Saturday at 7 p.m. Central on Lifetime and streaming the next day at mylifetime.com. You know, you're one of those guys. I don't hear from you for a couple years, and then a, a new year comes, and bang, you have a brand new project. Let's hear about this. Yeah, you know, well, for the last five years, I've been taking care of my dad. Um, he's been ill, and he passed, actually, in July. So uh, I always say every day not in the hospital is a great day. Um, and uh, and now I want to get back to work. So my agent called, had this great picture for me. I read it, great director, great producer. And then the, the talented and movie star, Sybil Shepherd. So I was excited about getting into it. Uh, and and she's a great actor, really committed. And, um, and I thought that the story about, it's a true story that a lot of people have heard about, Daniel and, and Nancy Brophy, uh, who were a couple living in Portland. They were broke. Nancy decided to take out an insurance policy on her husband and then murder him. Uh, so, and, and the story is, is, is pretty fascinating. Uh, and I think we're going to get a great audience for it because it's, it's, it's just one of those shows that you can't take your eyes off because you cannot believe that this woman did what she did. Wow. Uh, allegedly yes. did what she did. She was convicted, <laughs> but she allegedly did it. Well, let me say... I'm sorry for your loss, and, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer in uh, karma, and I think, sir, you have some very good karma coming to you. Good for you, doing all that for your dad. Uh, thanks a lot. You know, if, you know, there were 35 million caregivers in this country, 35 million. That's like 20% of the adult population, and, um, and not to get into it, but you, when you have someone that you love that's not doing well, and I'm lucky enough to have a, a business and a career that I'm able to take that many years off and, and look after my dad. It was a really meaningful experience, and, uh, and I actually wrote a book about it and uh, about taking care of, because I think caregivers, you never see another caregiver because you're always alone in a home taking care of somebody. There's no sort of a get-together for them. So I wanted to write a book about it, but my dad was really happy, uh, and I know in heaven he was really happy that I start to work, because I traveled the day on his birthday, September 26th is when I got on a plane to go to Vancouver to shoot this movie. Man, what a great, great yeah. story. I'm serious. Well, uh, now, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Now, let me ask, because I, I could Google it, but I'm going to ask, how many police academy films did you do? Wow, I did four out of seven. And do you know, and I know, <laughs> that 24 hours a day, police academy is playing somewhere in this world. <laughs> somewhere, someone is playing police academy, which is really cool. I've been really lucky to be in a bunch of pictures, and I was in four out of seven of the police academy. Yeah. And uh, I've been so lucky to be in movies like Cocoon or Three Men and a Baby. Um, and those series. But the thing about Police Academy is I love Carrie Mahoney, and I'm hoping to do another one because I think he's a really funny character. And interestingly enough, I was one time at the White House and talking to Bill Clinton, he said, you know, Steve, when I'm down, no matter what time in the morning or day it is, I'll go in and get the projectionist to put on Police Academy. Puts me in a better mood. And that's, that's, the, that's the magical part of Police Academy. You know, 
silly humor yeah. can really pick you up. Hey. It really can. Hey, I, 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 I'll admit it. It's, it's, it's a guilty pleasure, but it shouldn't be guilty because, uh, hey, one of my, my favorite film of all time, one of them was on yesterday, uh, Animal House. I watched half of that and went, God, this doesn't get old either. So, listen, I, I believe that story is true because it's Bill Clinton. I mean, he was a, he also liked Porky's, but that's another, uh, that's another story. Now, listen. <laughs> well, listen, that was, that was a bad joke. Now, which, which Kim Cattrall was in? Yeah, that, she certainly was, wasn't she? Oh, good yeah. God, yes. Uh, hey, uh, look, before you go, I got to tell you, um, Diner. Did you know when you were making the movie Diner that it would be you know a cult classic for a hundred years? I didn't understand cult classic. I was twenty three years old, but I did know that it was going to be a success. While we were shooting it, when Timothy Daly and I did the bar scene, I walked out of there and I called my publicist and I said, I think we got something here. I just had a feeling. And you do have a feeling. You know, when you go into a restaurant and you order your food and you can smell it and you can look around, you got a feeling the food's going to be good. That's the way it is with a movie. When you walk on the set and you read the script and you see the other actors and you see how everybody is approaching the work you get a feeling and I got a feeling that Diner was going to work and it worked big time it was chosen by Vanity Fair to be the number one the best movie of the last 30 years oh, wow. and that's pretty cool uh, I thought you were going to say the best movie of the last 30 years was Sharknado 4. But that's a whole... No, I'm kidding. Listen, Steve Guten. No, nah, that's, a, that's a whole different story. And actually, I turned down Sharknado. <laughs> yes. Uh, and and I, I was sitting at the kitchen table when the producers and the, and the agent uh, pitched it to me. And I said, no one's going to watch this movie. Well, I was kind of wrong about that one. Well, hey. <laughs> I think you made some pretty good choices. And uh, one of them being... This Saturday, How to Murder Your Husband. See what I did there? Work that. Uh, yes. Thank I, you for that plug. Of course, 7 p.m. on Lifetime and streaming the next day uh, at mylifetime.com. Listen, Steve Gutenberg, I've got a current photo of you. You look amazing. Happy, healthy. Again, sorry uh, on the loss of your father, but uh, good karma to you for taking care of him and uh, for being so entertaining all these years. Come on back to the Johnny Rock Show anytime. Okay, Steve? I will, Johnny, and I wish you and your family good health and success. Mazel! The Johnny Rock Show. Rockin' 101. The Rock Station.